May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Our God, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. Our gospel lesson this evening is the last scene in Luke's gospel. In it, we experience one of the most theologically significant aspects of the Christian faith. Jesus being carried to heaven. Today, the church celebrates the Feast of the Ascension, where 40 days after Jesus' glorious resurrection, he takes his seat at the Father's right hand. The Ascension is so theologically important because it is what cements, if you will, our own path to the Father wherein the incarnation is about God taking on human form and living among us. The crucifixion is about the extent to which God demonstrates his love for us by offering his own son as a sacrifice for our sins. And the resurrection shows the Son of God destroying death. The ascension of Jesus to the Father's right hand is the portal by which we are always in Jesus' presence. Without the ascension, humanity would be left with an incomplete story of salvation. It's by Jesus' continuing transformation from eternal word to God incarnate to resurrected body and now ascended king of kings, that we are able to see the path that our temporal see the path from our temporal existence to everlasting life but there's an aspect about the ascension that can be a challenge for some folks the idea that Jesus ascension indicates a spatial or geographic location that Jesus goes to that by ascending, he went up to heaven. And heaven is somewhere up here above our heads. I remember as a kid in school, trying to figure out where exactly heaven was. So there's seven layers of the earth's atmosphere, right? So heaven must be somewhere between the stratosphere and outer, outer space. And that's where Jesus went to be with the Father. But I want to suggest that there's another way. There's another lens that we can look at the ascension through. I want to suggest that maybe God isn't just up there. And Jesus didn't necessarily ascend up there. And heaven isn't a geographical or spatial location. I want to suggest that whether Jesus went up or diagonal or sideways, his ascension is more about the position that Christ took 40 days after Easter and the position that he inhabits now in our reality. Now that's not to diminish or to even contradict Luke's accounts of Jesus' being elevated into the sky but to add to it, to add a perspective that not only locates Jesus above us, but allows us to imagine Jesus all around us. In the Eastern Orthodox Church, the image of the Christ Pantocrator is commonly used to adorn the magnificent domed ceilings above the Byzantine-style altars. This specific depiction of Christ, as it encircles the altar, is a visual representation of that idea that by Jesus' ascension, he surrounds us. By his ascension, we are able to encounter all the saints of heaven, And Jesus, too, 
at the right hand of the Father, around every corner, on any path, or in any place. Sisters and brothers in the risen Christ, the ascension does not move the resurrected Christ away from us. The ascension brings the resurrected Christ closer to us. Jesus' ascension allows us to see him revealed in all of his glory. A glory that we too share with him as resurrection people. 